Good morning to you. Hello, hello. The Eric Sancho podcast is underway. You know, when the doctor prescribed to me, when he said, easy, I'm going to uh, prescribe Flomax. What is that? Well, you know, you take it and uh, it makes it so you can go potty, so you can pee. What's going on with me? Well, we don't know that yet. What do you mean? We're not sure why you always feel like your bladder is never empty. Um, we're not sure why you're not actually able to empty your bladder. But the Flomax, that kind of loosens things up so that the P-tube, uh, P-tube isn't as constricted. All right. I take one of those little capsules and I don't notice a big difference. I think perhaps it was the medicine was helping, but the condition may have been worsening. Whatever. We don't know what this is yet. I'm going to begin that process of finding out Friday when I go to the urologist. It could be that I've got a softball sized tumor in my bladder. I, it, it's, that's not, that's not true. I, that That's what idiots like me think though. When, you know, your body's not acting right. I don't know about you, but every time there's anything that happens to me, it could be from a hangnail to this, I'm instantly, uh, I've got cancer. I've convinced myself that I have cancer about a dozen times over the years. <clears throat> No, it's clearly cancer. It's brain cancer. It's leg cancer. Oh, it's cancer of my blood. Tooth cancer. I've even had that. You always like toy with your your mortality. I almost said morality. I didn't sleep well last night because, man, okay. It's just a perfect storm. So uh, let me get back to this. I taken the one uh, pill and then uh, Byers says, all right, you're going to go to a uh, urologist. But in the meantime, double up on the Flomax. Easy. Okay. When you run out of medicine, typically, uh, you, you know, you, you get it refilled. No, I didn't do that. Of course not. Last night, no Flomax. And I was uh, working over at Bosco's and I drink water the entire time I'm there. Even though I know, I know that I should stop drinking water or just sip it at some point because it's going to come back to haunt me if I'm drinking water all the way up to 10 o'clock at night. I get home. After sweeping the floor and cleaning out the fryer. That every 15 minutes I'm going to have to get up to go pee because I don't. And then sure enough, I open up the medicine bottle. No Flomax. None. Like, oh no. Needless to say, I went to the uh, MyChart app and immediately requested a refill of my Flomax to be picked up later today. But son of a bitch, man. I was up every hour and just trying to muscle out a couple of squirts to relieve the pressure in my bladder. For some reason, at night, I struggle to pee more than like the day. Like if I I had to go pee right now, and I went in there. I would pee for a fair amount of time. I would my bladder would uh, would empty quite a bit. It ain't perfect, but it's better than at night. Nighttime is shit, and I don't know why. What the fuck? And then you add in the fact that uh, I have no medicine to make things easier when it comes to going tinkle, and it was just a struggle. I'm standing there for ten minutes. 
Oh, falling asleep, standing up was not good. A nap is in my future today and a trip to the pharmacy. Son of a bitch. Okay. Hopefully I will have some answers on Friday. I think at the very least I'll have some answers as to what the uh, course of action is for your old pal EZ. And, uh, in this whole scenario, of course, Dr. Steve from weird medicine said, Oh yeah, they're going to stick a first. He goes, it's your prostate. I go, maybe. And then he, uh, he says, uh, they, they might also stick fiber opt- optic camera right up your yin yang. Oh, so anyway. That's how that went. So now I've got to like compartmentalize all that and have fun doing this show. You need to be reminded, please, that dear meathead with my beloved father uh, shows up in 51 minutes. Dad will be here for dear meathead. If you have a question, please send it along. Eric at ericzaneshow.com. I would love you to check out my uh, my segment with dad. Officially, no questions right now. None. So if any of the usual suspects or even the non-usual suspects have anything you'd like to ask dad about to kick off a big fraud Wednesday. It, uh, yes, fraudulent activities all throughout the day. What with Dear Meathead, this show, the Patreon bonus podcast, the uh, Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. And before that, who are these Zanes? As I've taken the idea from our pal Carl, who no doubt will send me a cease and desist at some point when the uh, relationship dries up. And uh, we review old audio from, um, from me. And uh, this one is from May, early May, 2001. Right after Tina Wesson. One survivor, excuse me. <coughs> Damn it. Billy Kidd and myself, Billy, God rest his soul. Still cannot believe you're gone. Um, and I were doing a radio show. And uh, I think on this one, we have um, old school PA pranks. I, I'm thinking about just lifting the PA pranks out of it and publishing that separate in addition to the show. Um, old school PA pranks is because, you know, that bit, that's where that bit began in Knoxville, Tennessee. And then after I got fired from IMZ and, uh, sauntered over to, uh, the twins show, which started out so great, it ended so poorly. Um, I was hanging out. I got a, uh, a, a, text message yesterday from uh, a buddy of mine who was speaking of uh speaking of the twins free beer and hot wings there was a hot wings sighting in the wild yesterday um buddy of mine was at a cross country race somewhere here uh in, in my neck of the woods and uh i guess they had a number of different uh schools together these are all middle schools um and uh, my buddy's kid was there and ran really well, by the way. Like 13 minutes for two miles. That's a nice six and a half minute, a mile pace for a, a young person. Middle school. Holy shit. Well, my buddy sends me a picture of hot wings. And I go, oh, no, what's up? And you, you must be at a sporting event. You, you know, he goes, yep, yep. And then he goes, he looks like fuck. And I'm like, well, yeah, don't we all, you know, that's what happens north of 50. And he goes, yeah, I know, but he looks actually unhealthy. You're round easy, but he actually looks like he's ill or something. I don't know. Maybe he's got bladder cancer. Who knows? Um, and I go, so, oh, I I get it. It's a youth sports. And he goes, yeah. And I guess there was uh, something that wasn't going well for uh, his little guy and uh, the kid was upset 
about something. And uh, I go, I said to Jimmy, I go, well, how did he run? He goes, not good. So he was frustrated, no doubt, that he had a tough day running. And uh, Hot Wings was uh, being sweet, I guess, and saying, it's okay. It'll be all right. Come on, let's go get an ice cream or some shit. Um, so a, a Hot Wings in the, in the wild sighting. Oh, my God. I don't even know why I'm even telling you that. I, it's not like anything exciting would have happened. Uh, Nick from the arena says, concerning prostate health, you're supposed to blow 22 loads a month minimum for good prostate health. Oh. Is that right? All right. Well, I might have some catching up to do. I got to, uh, my wife has to factor into this. Chris says hot wings is boring, but seems like a nicer person than free beer. Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess. Kent says that was a very hot wings esque story. You mean like no point, right? Yeah, it happens. It happens. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, all right. So again, send a question for dad. Eric at Eric Z, uh, Eric at Eric Zane show.com for dear meathead. Uh, so remember the dude who um, inspired that crazy work of fiction, QAnon propaganda film, Tim Ballard. The movie was called Sound of QAnon. I don't know what it is about people, but uh, this type of neatly quaffed hair with the beard and the steely blue eyes and the jawline for days, they always strike me as someone who would be up to no good. It's like the same type of guy who, who tries to sell me a roof on TV. I don't know what it is, but every time I see a company where there's a guy on there saying, yeah, uh, I was in the army. For some reason, I don't trust them. And that does, I know it doesn't make any sense. Uh, my roofing company, Army Roofing, all of my employees were in the army. For some reason, I'm I'm like, I, I don't know why, but you seem suspicious to me. Why? Am I the, the only one who thinks that? You know, it's actually pretty risky of me to even admit something like that because it sounds fucking crazy. Tim Ballard is the guy who's, who, you know, he, I'm going to go rescue kids. And then they made this silly movie, uh, it says based on a true story and 1% of it is, uh, is accurate. Now this isn't about the movie. It's just that, um, he's an anti sex trafficking activist and he got all the world to believe in this nonsense story of his. And, uh, then the QAnon people made the, um, propaganda film, Tim Ballard's, uh, organization, to save kids from um, sex trafficking is called Operation Underground Railroad. That's a nonprofit where, according to him, uh, the point of it is to save all the kids who, uh, if you remember, Jamingo said that 30 million kids each year are stolen from their beds in America and then thrown into the sex trade. Tim Ballard is the last line of defense with his Operation Underground Railroad. Uh, his salary for this nonprofit is $550,000 a year for this nonprofit. I think the uh, term nonprofit actually means all profit. I've become very suspicious of when people say, yeah, I'm uh, working for a nonprofit or I'm running a nonprofit. I then, you know, they're driving around in a Porsche. Uh, 
he has resigned from his $550,000 a year job with the nonprofit because he's being accused of sexual harassment. I take it back. He's resigned under accusations of sexual harassment. So he resigned and those accusations are flying. He didn't say, I'm resigning from my non-for-profit profit profit job because I've been harassing women. Uh, Under investigation for allegedly coercing at least seven women to act like wives while on overseas missions when he resigned three months ago quietly from the nonprofit child rescue group he founded, according to a news report published this week. So for three weeks, this or for three months, this joker has been like, Oh, I'm out. And no one's known about it. And then finally the word got out. Uh, Ballard, a former Homeland security agent who founded the Utah, that's suspect right there. If it's based in Utah, that that's weird. Utah is a weird state. Okay. Looks like you're on the surface of Mars and you're full of a bunch of crazy fucking Mormons. He founded Operation Underground Railroad in 2013. He's denied the allegations laid out in a Vice News story that cited sources with direct knowledge of the organization. Ballard, a married father of nine, another red flag, Added that while at the helm of um, Operation Underground Railroad, he designed strict guidelines for myself and our operators in the field. Sexual contact was prohibited and I led by example, it said. Given our meticulous attention to this issue, any suggestion of inappropriate sexual conduct is categorically false. So he's full on denying. Operation Underground Railroad confirmed Ballard resigned on June 22, but did not explain why. It did state that the organization has retained an independent law firm to conduct a comprehensive investigation of all relevant allegations. That's so crazy to me. You can start a quote unquote nonprofit. It's yours. And then you're forced to leave. Again, I don't trust this guy based on how he looks alone. See that? No way. I don't trust you. Too good looking. Too rugged. Anybody that I can describe as rugged cannot be trusted. Because rugged guy gets tons of ass. Rugged jawline for miles guy gets hot chicks throwing tons of ass at him. Which means he's warped in the brain, probably drunk with power. Fuck this guy. Corey says more than once, nonprofits are for money laundering. Uh, Tyler also points out, especially the ones that wear the look at me, I'm a veteran hat. Yeah, I've, I've had it with that. I've said it before boldly, and I'll say it again. That's awesome that you uh, went into the military. But you're right up there with uh, stick figures on the back of minivan, Mom. You're right up there with uh, uh, a 70.3 or 140.6 or Iron Man sticker on the back of car. You know, you can't have it both ways because if I go up to guy at airport and say, thank you for your service. And then he freaks out. And then when I'm driving away in a parking lot, I see sticker that says operation Iraqi freedom or a license plate on the back or dude with the uh, hat that says uh, USS Nimitz. Pick one. Corey says it's only acceptable for World War II vets. No, that's that's too recent. It has to be 
a revolutionary war. If you have a sticker that says revolutionary war vet on the back of your car, maybe. Corey adds, any vets newer than World War II, leave your dumb hat at home. Nick says, the more stickers on car, the higher the level of crazy. Yeah, I don't care what stickers they are. I had one guy yesterday who had a Michigan mitten with the gun in it. He had, instead of stick figures, it said, my family. And stick figure of AR-15, stick figure of, uh, uh, I don't know what the fuck it was, just a regular rifle, stick figure of two handguns. And then he had some stupid saying, it was like an emblem about when uh, uh, something, something, using words like tyranny and freedom and rebellion. Fuck you. The fact that you took all that time to put your Patriot billboards on there makes uh, makes me uh, hate your guts. Tyler says the hats might as well say, I'm a veteran, give me special treatment because that's what they really mean. Corey says, car in front of me had a, uh, it, where it said, quote, Woman, this is your child and a picture of a fetus on it. Yeah, that that's rough too. I don't like those. Bob says, what about revolutionary war reenactors? You know, totally different. Those are, those are, uh, uh, you know, performers. That's what that is. At the end of the day, they pack it up, have a cold one, and go home. It's like a softball team guy. But anyway. Tyler says, did you know KMK is the veteran? I only know that because she says it at the beginning of every sentence she ever speaks. Oh, yeah. We all know. And you're a janitor. And your husband installs ACs. How cool. Thanks. Um, where was I? Anyway, Tim Ballard. And by the way, thank you to Bleeding Heart Brian. He sent this one in late and it's been moved to the top of the... Uh, of the menu here today. Um, one more comment. Corey says any, any more than four kids, four kids or more. And it's, it's a problem. I think, I think, uh, four itself, you're right on the line. Four kids. There's, there's just some degree of crazy there. Something's going on. Um, by the way, Ballard got a, $200,000 raise from uh, Underground Railroad in 2022, Operation Underground Railroad in 2022, and was paid $546,548 in salary and compensation, according to the most recent 990 form that nonprofits are required to file with the IRS. A year earlier, Ballard was paid $355,000 in salary and compensation. I don't know what this has to do with... Um, him in the sexual harassment. I think what they're doing there is they like to point out this uh, NBC News article, the hypocrisy of the term not-for-profit. People who are, if, if it says not-for-profit, these are people who are like, uh, rescuing children is my pay. I, am, I earn just enough to survive, and uh, I go out and rescue children. That's all I do. Um, yeah, if I'm making $550,000 a year, there's no fucking way I'm going to travel anywhere to go get some fucking kid. I'm going to be doing tons of blow and in the hot tub. Uh, 
Uh, a month after the raise, Ballard left. An anonymous letter was sent to organization employees and donors. That's the whistleblower. Several weeks ago, in Operation Underground, railroad employee who accompanied Tim on an undercover operation filed a sexual harassment complaint against him with uh, or Operation Underground Railroad's HR department. Known further in this article as OUR, O-U-R, Operation Underground Railroad. The letter said, according to a copy shared with NBC News by veteran broadcast journalist Lynn Packer, who has been covering Ballard for years, this resulted in an extensive internal investigation into Tim and his individual operational tactics and led to more women speaking up as part of the investigation process. TikTok, aren't you supposed to say that when the walls are closing in on somebody like Mel Tugger or some shit? TikTok, they're closing in, TikTok. It was ultimately revealed through disturbingly specific and parallel accounts that Tim had been deceitfully and extensively grooming and manipulating multiple women for the past two or three years with the ultimate intent of coercing them to participate in sex acts with him under the premise of uh, going wherever it takes and doing whatever it takes to save a child. So according to this, he's using... Operation Underground Railroad to have like a pussy enterprise or something, right? Ballard was played in the movie by QAnon uh, shill Jim Caviezel. Has long been a staunch supporter of former President Trump. I, I could have told that told you that just by looking at him. Chiseled draw, uh, jaw, neatly coiffed beard, Handsome devil, Trump, QAnon, fucking corrupt as shit. He also said he's very seriously considering running for the U.S. Senate seat being vacated by Senator Mitt Romney, uh, a Republican from Utah. Oh, yeah, that that's a that's a you would win by a landslide there. Nine kids, multiple wives, handsome devil, QAnon in Utah. Oh, yeah. But Ballard may already be in trouble with a key constituency in Utah, the Mormon Church. Uh, Vice reported earlier this month that Ballard claimed his work with Operation Underground Railroad got the blessing of M. Russell Ballard, who is acting president of the, uh, do you say quorum? Q-U-O-R-U-M or quorum? Quorum of the 12 apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and no relation to Ballard. Russ Ballard, didn't he write that song, Voices? Nobody's going to get that reference. In response, the church said, no, 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 we, we never endorse this guy. Once it became clear Tim Ballard had betrayed their friendship through the unauthorized use of President Ballard's name for Tim Ballard's personal advantage and activity regarding as morally unacceptable. President Ballard then withdrew his association. So leader of the Mormon church in Utah, that's a lot of people. There's a, everybody there is fucking crazy. I never forget when we were in Utah walking up to Angels Landing, this hike. It was, I'm not kidding you, 113 degrees. And some whacked out Mormon dad wearing his uh, uh, dark wool pants, suspenders, white shirt, stupid beard. And like 20 women behind him. All these daughter wives. And uh, it was all switchbacks to get up the fucking mountain. So we're constantly intersecting. Us going one way, Queen of the Forest, Easy, Jackie, uh, Madison, and then seeing this this gaggle, and all the chicks are like, "Don't look at us!" They're all looking down. They're all they're they're like all. It's like a a dog. What's that song? That Springsteen song. End up like a dog that's been beat too much. Born in the USA. They're all like looking down, looking side eye, like help us. They're trying to blink in weird ways to Morse code out. Help me. Oh. 
I was like, we got to get to the fucking top of the hill here and then get out because he's probably going to sacrifice all these chicks. Just push them right off. Um, Amanda says, I would do him in a heartbeat, Tim Ballard. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And that's what, and that's what's happened over the years. Women have thrown it at this, uh, Mormon superhero and he's drunk with power, making half a million dollars a year. That's what happens to people. They're drunk with power. They think that they can do anything. Amanda says, no, 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 not Tim Ballard. Jim Caviezel, same thing. Same exact thing. Well, that's that. Now, what's interesting about this is all the wackos who go to see Sound of QAnon and act like it's, you know, a real true life story. Uh, all those psychos are going to say, oh, this is just, this, 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 the mainstream media trying to tell you his name. No, he resigned. He did resign. He was making $550,000 a year. And, uh, and, and there are allegations from multiple women, sexual harassment allegations against him. That's not like, that's, that's actually happened. You can find those. Uh, accusations. Come on. It's the dumbest thing ever. It, it, it's the mainstream media. We don't trust them. Shut up. Uh, Paul Forster is in the house for the first time in a while. He says, how's it going? Missed you bastards. Well, where have you been? It's going to be tough for you to watch the show. Because there's going to be some commercials that fly in out of left field for you. So subscribe. Uh, Darla is now making her presence known. I just caught her eating some of her own poo. That was not great. She did it in the studio. And then I heard noises. And I was like, wait, what's going on? Are you chewing on something? Oh, she's chewing on something. All right. That's a new wrinkle. Got to stop that. I didn't know that that happens. I thought we only had one dog that did that. But not... But Do- O'Neill doesn't eat his own cooking. Horrible. Sorry if you're eating breakfast. Okay. Uh, like I indicated, massive ladder issues. EZ needs to go tinkle. Um, if you could send a question for Dear Meathead, that would be awesome. Eric at ericzaneshow.com. I will be back. Kenny with the comment. Dogs must have zero taste buds. That is, uh, it's like, um, baby Jesus was making the dog one day and, uh, his dad walks up to him. He says, Hey Jesus. He goes, yeah, dad. This is a perfect creature. You know, everything on, on earth though, Jesus is like, well, thanks dad. He goes, but you know, everything on earth has to have some type of like weakness. Everything on earth has to have like something that makes it uh, earth like not heaven. Like if this dog were perfect, we would only have it up here on heaven. I want you to implant it with something. Uh, how about you make it eat its own shit or other dog shit so that humans can kind of go, ah, cause those humans, they can't have everything. That's nice. We got that one guy who's down there saying that he's rescuing children, but meanwhile, he's sticking his fingers in chicks and, uh, talking about QAnon nonsense. That's a perfect example. Okay, well, I'll, I'll fuck it all up then. I'll make it so that they eat their own shit. Oh. <sighs> Kari says, easy. That's a really long joke. Yeah, I know. I made it up off the top of my head. Uh, 
Amanda says, I love it. God sounds like Eric Zane. Paul Forster says, my ADHD fools me in all different directions with hobbies and subjects. This year, it's surfing. Sorry, I've been absent. You're getting into surfing, you say. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Eric at ericzaneshow.com for Dear Meathead. Officially, one. One question in the books. I've often said, if it goes, it gets to the point where it's work to do this segment, I'm slowly going to make it fade away. It, and not as a punishment, then it's like just my, my thought that it's run its course. Uh, if people are no longer interested in, in participating, then I can't. I don't want to make up questions off the top of my head. I hate that shit. Uh, if you can tap the resources of your brain, what's going on in your life? Put it in a simplified question for him. He loves this. He so looks forward to it. But obviously, you all want to take that away from him. So you don't want to send questions because you hate my dad. That's what's happening there. Clearly. Right? I, I don't even believe that. That's ridiculous. But uh, yeah, if you could, Eric at ericzaneshow.com. If you have a question for dad on Dear Meathead. Corey says, ask him about the stupid hats. Ryan says, I'm with Jamingo. I mean, I just can't watch an innocent man be used like that with his troll face afterwards. Uh, I want to share with you a, a video clip of uh, some quarterback, Long Island quarterback, a small school, I guess. Uh, and watch. Okay. So the quarterback is going to drop back to pass. And if you can picture the way a quarterback throws the ball or a pitcher, even overhand, just throwing it, this guy throws it underhand. A quarterback throws the bomb underhand with deadly accuracy. I, I, I couldn't believe this when I saw it. I had to watch it like three times. I thought for a second it was, uh, it was like a deep fake or something like that. But uh, let me make sure I have all the things I need here. Audio check, video check. Here we go. Keep your eye on the quarterback here. Oh, the middle of the field will be open. Look at that sidearm swing underneath it. Okay. A first down for long. Uh, what? Look at, look at his... Uh, what, it's it's down like below his waist. Look at that sidearm swing. The what the, the fuck? Look at that sidearm swing. He throws it like, uh, you remember in uh, Napoleon Dynamite, Uncle Rico, when he when he throws that stake and hits Napoleon with it? Oh, the middle of the field will be open. Look at that sidearm swing underneath it. What A the first fuck? down for long. Oh, the middle of the field. <laughs> Playing Baylor, I think they ended up losing, but that is that is ridiculous. I would watch that all day. Tyler says um, that is not sidearm; that's a borderline granny style throw. How is he? How is he accurate? How does he do that? Uh, Blue State Rob says it's weird, but he gets a lot of torque throwing it that way. Oh, I, I believe it. I believe he's got it down. There's no question. But it just looks so fucked up. Kyle says Uncle Rico will be taking over quarterback for the Jets. There was talk about uh, uh, Tom Brady. Yeah, every time uh, someone gets hurt and someone's recently retired... It was the same rumor about Kaepernick. How about, well, why, why not Joe Theismann? Let's bring them all out. Come on now. They're going to stick with the MILF hunter. It's totally fine. All right. Uh, for those of you that are watching the show on Facebook, 
on Twitter and on YouTube. Thank you for being there, but I'm about to kick you out because, well, the rest of the show is available on Twitch only. And you can uh, check it out by downloading the Twitch app on whatever uh, type of phone that you have, either the Google Store, I guess they call it, or the App Store, downloading it and then searching Eric Zane Live, all one word, and there I am. Follow the page. It'll let you know when I go live. And if you want to link up your Amazon Prime account, that is a perk where if you do link up your Amazon Prime account, and then hit the subscribe button each month, you will get the show minus any video commercials that Twitch slash Amazon puts in there. Uh, Or you can just let them play. That's fine too, if you don't mind. Or uh, if you don't have Amazon Prime and want to skip the commercials, I think you can pay a few bucks for that a month. But I don't really push that or anything. That's I don't even think anybody even does that, but... uh, Whatever. I'm just letting you know that that option is there. And of course, my Patreon is there. Uh, Today is a Big Fraud Wednesday. Who are these Zanes? Followed by the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. And on today's Ben and Eric Patreon podcast, I need to read to you some of the hatred that your old pal Easy has gotten from people who are fans of Who Are These Podcasts. A little bit of background here. Carl from Who Are These Podcasts approached me about doing a spinoff show called Who Are, the, Who Are These Broadcasters? Where for an hour, we play clips. Some of them you see on this show. And then we uh, crack wise about said clips. We've done six episodes. And um, there's a handful of people who want us to die. I mean, actually... What, this one guy is is wishing death upon me in like the most gruesome ways ever. It's hysterical. I love it. And I need to read you some of those things that he said on Reddit. And part of his, instead of just like ignoring it, what he's doing is um, Carl, first of all, Carl had been putting the show, like if you follow Who Are These Podcasts on Apple Podcasts, he was releasing the show on there. So it would say, who are these podcasts, episode number, whatever. And then below it, it would say, who are these broadcasters, episode five. So if you don't want to listen to it, you don't. And then, but he was mad because it was showing up on the feed, which you just, he doesn't, we're not forcing him to click it. We're not forcing him to listen to it yet. He's saying, I seriously, I want you to die. And it's so funny. And so I need to read those to you, the dialogue. Um, from I think it's one guy who has got several accounts because the writing is very similar. He keeps calling me the F word rhymes with Baggett. And I'm like, how can you do that? Can't you get in trouble for that? Don't you lose your job automatically if you call someone F rhymes with Baggett? Oh, my God. It's, it's awesome. I love it so much. So I'll share some of that with you on the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast today. Uh, that, sh- that show starts at about 7 p.m. Eastern time. Before that, who are these Zanes happens? Probably about 6.15, 6.20. We'll also put that out live for you to watch on uh, my Patreon, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. And you can sign up for free. You can get all this stuff for the next week for free to try it out. It's a test drive. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Seven days free. You do have to put in a payment form. But as long as you cancel it before the seven days, you won't be charged the five or ten bucks that you sign up for. That's foolproof. And I don't make it like hard for you to cancel or anything like that. Just hit the fucking button. And again, I, I'm, I always tell everybody this. But um, in June, I started this. This free, uh, seven days free. And um, I've had 50 people try it. I've had more than 50 people try it. But I've had 50 people actually sign up. Truth be told, I was, uh, I'd leveled off on the amount of Patreon subscribers. I hadn't had new people in a while, but all of a sudden, because of the seven days free where people can try it, that's really helped. So patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Even if you cancel it one day after you sign up, you still get the seven days free. So that's cool. As always, what I'm saying right now, the free podcast becomes available wherever you download shows. 
Obviously, no charge for that. Just wh- whatever podcasting platform you listen on, search Eric Zane Show Podcast. And uh, there I am. So you folks on Facebook, X, or YouTube, I say goodbye to you now. Uh, Facebook and Twitch brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. X brought to you by Blue Frost IT. Corey says the Fat Fuck Summit was a big seller. Ah, there was a few. It's been it's been pretty steady for the past uh, several months now because of the uh, because of the free trial. It's it's really worked out great. Kyle says, who are these broadcasters is a good show. Good compliment to your show and who are these podcasts. Uh, I was talking with Christian Blatt and Carl yesterday after we concluded show number six yesterday. And I go, it, it's starting to feel more comfortable. You know, before it was three strangers talking. And that can be hard. But we're now figuring it out. And um, it... Uh, it, it seems to be an easier, uh, an easier job. You know, it was fine. The first few, but, uh, I, it, it, we're, we're kind of figuring it out. Stevie, who was once a target of our pal, Jamingo. She listened to the fat fuck summit. Stevie says, I just listened to that for my apology. He never really explained why he targeted me, but whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he likes you. You know, did you ever do that, guys, when you were in school? you like, if you liked a girl, uh, all we knew how to do was, like, walk up to her and be mean to her. Maybe pull her pigtails or hit her with the big red ball right in the face when she's not looking. Uh, some may have called called her a whore. Uh, that's That's how you, when you're a kid in elementary school, that's how you uh, convey that you like like someone. And his brain is kind of on that level. Patrick says, I heard all of the Fat Fuck Summit 2023 t-shirts sold out. You are correct. 1,157 uh, disappeared off of the shelves. Uh, thank you for those who paid the 25 bucks a pop. Um, all proceeds go to me. There was no charity involved. All of it is mine and I'm going to spend it, uh, on things around here. I need a new hot tub cover and a new pool cover. And I think that's clocking in at about $5,800 for all that. Kenny says elementary school age kids calling each other whores. Yikes. Oh, it's true. Your kids have done it too. You're probably your daughter's running around calling dudes whores. Corey says skunk haired bitch is a pretty funny sounding insult. Amanda says, oh, don't use any of that profit to actually upgrade anything in the studio. I, I don't need any to upgrade anything. Everything's perfect here. Can you hear me? Well, great. Then it works. That's all I need. That's all I use is a microphone. Everything else doesn't matter. Do I tell you how to sell your stupid dildos? No. Amanda said you got to update the Zenith. I don't have to. How does it sound? I don't have to update anything. If it goes south, I just hit it. You see, I just knocked it out of whack because of you. Now it's back. Check, check. I don't think it is. I think you fucked it up. See, it's good. It's good. The Zaniacs bought a good studio and equipment. Yeah, I appreciate that. They they, they did. They did all that for me. And that's why um, I owe them, you know? Because that's how it works. All right. Dear Meat Headed Moments. 
Eric at EricZaneShow.com. Thank you to Rob, Stevie, Nathan, and Patrick. I appreciate you. Eric at EricZaneShow.com. For Dad. The open and live stream of this show is brought to you by Excellent Installation. That's Jacob Bennett. Jacob Bennett has been on this show talking about his flooring business for quite some time. Under the, um, it's kind of like when, um, you know, you first you saw Twitter and then it's like suddenly X. Think that. Excellent installation. Installing flooring in your home for the best price possible. 616-318-0167 for excellent installation. The way this uh, the way this works is you buy the flooring uh, that you want installed could be carpeting, hardwood, laminate, vinyl plank, tile, ceramic, anything. When you want it installed, reach out to Jacob Bennett. 616-318-0167 excellent installation. That's 616-318-0167. Otherwise, you're going to do it yourself. It's going to look like garbage. You need to have this handsome legend in your home. He's also the owner of M37 Hackers. More on that when golf season ends officially around here. The Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage invites you to reach out to them. When it comes to getting your mortgage from anywhere in the United States, 231-332-6505. That's 231-332-6505 for the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. Whether it's your first mortgage, your 10th, maybe you've lived in your home for a while and you want to get some money out of it. uh, Reach out to Mario and he'll help you every step of the way. You know, perhaps you want to get a new roof for your home and you're like, "I I don't have the money. I don't know what to do. Uh, all right, just get a little money out of your house. Okay, let's say you borrow like 20 grand uh, for a new roof. Just throwing any figure out there. All right, you're going to add that and you're going to spread that out over the life of your loan. You're barely even going to notice. And then you get the new roof. That's what homes are there for. You can always pay it off early too. 231-332-6505. You know, if you work hard as all these uh, audience members like Kenny, or Amanda. It's almost like they should be a couple. 231-332-6505 for the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. It sounds ridiculous, but I have to go potty again. This is really starting to get aggravating, but that's the world I'm in right now. Stand by. So uncomfortable. I want to get into the story of Sergio Brown, who I think at some point was an NFL football player. Yes. He used to play for the uh, Buffalo Bills and uh, maybe a couple of other teams at some point. Here he is. You know, and uh, here he is at a happier time. And then this is Sergio's lovely mother. Uh, She's dead. And everybody thinks that he killed her. This happens all the time where an NFL player, former NFL player, just loses his shit. She was found dead uh, in a creek on Saturday. And then, from what I'm understanding, the neighbor's ring doorbell cam footage saw Sergio Brown taking out bags of trash that were her clothes and burning all her clothes. And then he disappeared. Family members of Sergio Brown have said that he hadn't been acting like himself these past few months, saying he was out of his mind. Uh, Mom's death was ruled a homicide due to multiple wounds from an assault. And then they couldn't find Sergio. They're like, what happened to him? Then he resurfaces in Mexico. 
and he shoots a video and puts it on his social media. Audio check, video check. This is Sergio talking crazy. Fake news. Fake news. It has to be the FBI. They came into my house on Bob Marley's death day. The FBI came into my house house on Bob Marley's death day. He's shooting a video from some cantina. His mom's just been found dead, and he flees to Mexico after burning her clothes and shoots his video. 5-11 agent gas, unwarranted. They kidnapped me twice from home, the Bayville Police Department, right? Chris Tupac did it twice. Aaron Pepper was there the second time that it happened. It had to be the FBI or the Maywood Police. I thought my mom was on vacation in Sinaloa. That's fake news. Get the f*** out of my goddamn face. She Looks like he's doing an impression of Dave Chappelle. You want to come to me? The Maywood Police got to give me money. The FBI had to do it. They got the power to do some like that. What the f*** is going on? That's fake news. Don't come f- with me. That seems very credible. I totally believe this guy. This is why if you're dating anybody who plays football or any type of uh, a contact sport, you're probably going to be with someone who's going to try to murder you at some point. <laughs> uh, Rob says, we found the black Dale Gribble. Amanda says, translate, please. I'm not sure. I couldn't. Yeah. Uh, the Mexic- the uh, cantina music was too loud. Wenji says it sounds like manic bipolar. Yeah, those people, manic bipolar people. Oh, God. Fucking head for the hills. It's that CTE. They're all fucked up. That just drives them crazy. Too many hits to the head. All right, let's get that in here for Dear Meathead. Hey, Dad, sorry about that. Hey, were you messed up? Yeah, that was on me. No, wait a minute. I did not hang up my phone when you when we done. Oh, I know. I figured that because I kept getting a dial tone. Yeah, okay. And my dear wife uh, has been as adamant as she is about her intelligence. I said, wait a minute, Rob. You, oh, wow. You didn't hang up. So here we are. Did you say Joanne has been adamant about her intelligence? Yes. That I know. That I definitely know. She is adamant about her intelligence. Well, I live with it, so thank- you can go out. You can figure things out for yourself. Well, thank God she's adamant about her intelligence because <laughs> if it wasn't for her, uh, we'd all be lost. Yeah. Uh, If it wasn't for Christmas, we all be Jewish. (laughs) Sure. Okay. Uh, All right. I got a number of people who have uh, asked some questions. I'd like to share them with you if you're, Uh, if you're comfortable. I love those people that you got. I'll tell you, they're just wonderful, wonderful people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, We have a question that says, should, uh, from the Cole report, should uh, Nick Chubb retire after his knee injury? Did you see that guy get hurt where his leg almost fell off? Yeah. The football player for the Browns, he got badly injured and his leg was all twisted. It looked like a chicken bone. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And they said it's like a one year recovery. Uh, I mean, if you suffer that type of an injury, dad, do you think it's a safe bet to just retire? I think it's an intelligent thing to do that. Yeah, you know, you you hear about football players getting all sorts of crazy injuries. Yes. Uh, There's there's no sense of playing around with something that God gave you to rely on it. And all of a sudden, uh, physically, you go ahead and mess it up. And then, well, you know the rest of it from there. So basically, God is telling that guy to retire. He should retire. All right, I got it. I got it. Have you? If I was his father, I would insist that he retires. 
Excellent choice. I agree with that. Uh, have you ever suffered any type of injury over the years? Like maybe when you were doing some work around the house or the trailer? I'm sure I recall two, but I don't know exactly what they were. I thought there was a, uh, didn't you uh, get hung up in the ladder and you were hanging upside down by your, by your leg? Yes. Yes. All right. That was, and Joanne saved the day on that one, right? Yes. Of course. And then didn't you fall off the roof or something? I fell off the roof. All right. Joanne probably saved the day on that one too. (laughs) You know, I'm telling you, if it weren't for our women, we'd be dead. We'd be dead. I definitely would be dead. Oh yeah. You and I are the same. It's like my wife is Joanne and Joanne is my wife. Yeah. 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 And then uh, even though they, even though they help my angel. Yeah, I'm, mine too. Uh my wife is the same way. Um and and then but the thing is, even though they're always right, we always act like we're right. <laughs> yeah, you could be right, honey. <laughs> you are right. Joanne says you are right. Yeah, yeah. That's how that's it's it must be uh, uh maddening to live with us, frankly. Yeah. Uh, Let me ask you a question. Uh, there's no there's no communication between what your brother is all about and you are. You guys are totally on different uh, line. Um, I, I I think I'm following you. Is it just like different personalities? Is that what you're saying? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you, you know, what's interesting is how Joanne and, uh, uh, Diana, if you ever get those two together, they just sit there and ca- they, they just, they sit there and cackle. They sit there and laugh at us. No, you're right. You're right. I never pay attention to that. Oh, it's, it's, if they, they always wind up sitting right next to each other and like canoodling and sharing secrets and laughing. <laughs> is that something? A, is there something between you and I? I don't know what they're doing, but they're very entertained. I know. She thinks I'm nuts. Oh, I know it. And my wife thinks I'm nuts. So this is perfect. This is It's like you and I are brothers almost. <laughs> well, we have the same genes. Yes. Well, yes, we do. You you gave me uh, yours. So. Yes. Um. Someone has You're too cheap to give me any of yours. <laughs> yes, right. They're they're mine. You can't have them. Uh, we had someone who has a question about uh, the United Auto Workers going on strike, and um, he's talking about the importance of unions. And what do you think about unions and striking auto workers, Dad? I think the unions that do these things are really selfish people. Well, they do not realize the damage that they cause for merely getting another five or ten dollars here and there. Well, I, I I think what the one of the big things they see is they see uh like uh, for example Ford has record profits. Cars are more expensive now than they've ever been. The the uh, all the big wigs are, are getting raises themselves, so they want a little cut of that. Well, that's a that's an analogy by itself. They have to correct that situation, cut cut off cut off things from giving it to them. Yeah, I think that's what they're they're trying to do. They're trying to. Well, anyway, you should do that. Okay. Well, I think that that's kind of the crux of it. You know, they're the the union is looking out for each other because these people they don't they don't make a ton of money. None of them are rich, for God's no, sake. No, you're right. But they already got some good concessions. You hear that? She says enough's enough. Well, that's the thing. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of people that feel like that. Um, but um, we'll see how this as this is this might drag on for a little while. Yeah. What's your opinion? Uh, typically, I, uh, I I side with the union on many of these things, and uh-huh. uh, and they and when they when they try to um, uh, ask for the moon and the stars, that's usually a negotiation tactic. So I imagine this will eventually work its way out where 
there is some type of, as Joanne said, some concessions. It's just going to take a well, little. Definitely, that's the only yeah. way you're going to resolve the issue. It's, it's going to take a little bit of time. I'm not in a position to say what they should and shouldn't get because I, you know, I don't have a dog yeah, in that correct. fight. But uh, yeah, I, you know, well, it, it, this is a good old fashioned labor strike. So, yeah, but you know, I don't know. I, I'm not too crazy about the uh, uh, unions and. Uh, uh, the, the politics that goes involved in that, you know. I want to strike against our government. <laughs> you want to strike against the government? To. Yeah. Well, you got to yeah. go. To, you got to go to the Capitol and break in. That's what you do. <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, I, I'm not going. I'm not going to use the ver- verbiage. Okay. Well, yep. Yep. A yep. Um, hey, how about this? Let's go this direction. We had a discussion recently on the show about. If a person has too many kids, they're crazy. And uh, and we, we, we set the limit at four. Any more than four is crazy. This uh, Stevie says, I found out that someone has nine children. What do you they're think? They're idiots. Yeah. They're idiots. <laughs> yeah, you can't trust somebody who's got nine kids. No, it's not that. A whole lot of the nine are going to get cheated out of the whole system. Really? Like, what do you mean? The education, the intelligence, uh, the lack of uh, paying attention. So, are you saying? Oh. Are you saying that if you like the 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 more kids you have, the less intelligent the kids are? No, it takes uh, from the, the, some of the other kids to give it to the one that you're working on. Oh, oh! And nobody really works on the kids. Oh, I get you. So, like after yeah. after seven, yeah, and after- they're there and. Uh, Whatever they do, well, it's their makeup. So uh, you're saying, like, after kid number seven, mom and dad are like, I don't even care anymore. They just let the kid do whatever. I think three kids is the maximum they yeah. should have. Yeah, number eight and nine, they can go to hell. I don't care about them. That's stupid. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? They have nothing else to do but sit there and produce children? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> come on. Oh man! And then they don't have them have the money to support them. No, no, they all turned out to be criminals. It's a, it's. I can't agree more. Oh my god! Yes. All right. I'm with you all the way. All right. Good. Good. All right. We're on the same page. Uh, Nathan says, "Dear Meathead, I have a job interview today. What can I do to make a good impression?" Well. Dress nice, neat, yeah. clean, mm-hmm. and you let them do the talking. Find out what their desires are, what their interests are in you. Yeah. And if you have to lie, <laughs> lie. Oh, whatever oh. they say, lie. Agree with them. Oh, okay. Let me let me write this down. When it comes to a job interview, number one, look nice. Number two, lie. <laughs> well. You know, agree with their thoughts. Listen to them, see what they're saying. Okay. And then use that to your advantage. All right. Yeah. So blow smoke. That's right. Yeah. And now when you got you know, any position, like a hierarchy of it, then you can bring up, bring your opinions in and enforce that. Oh, okay. So basically fake it till you make it. And then once yeah. you make it, then you can start to impose your will. It sounds Get like uh, yourself in. It sounds like playing a game of chess to me. Yes. All right. Excellent. So some good bluffing techniques, and then maybe uh, lie your way to the top. Yes. Well, it's really not a lie. It's an opinion. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, Dad, the Lions lost that game the other day. Everyone's disappointed. Oh, I was so sick about that. Yeah, that was awful. That was awful. Um, I, 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 I they played a good game. It was uh, enjoyable. I'll give you that. But man, I, yeah. I, and then they got some key players are injured now. Now it's uh, yeah, yeah. So we could have won that game. Yeah, we could have. Uh, everybody's <laughs> upset. Everybody's upset about it. But uh, try as they may. Uh, it just seems to kind of one step forward, one step back. We'll see how they do next week. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, do, you, do you have any final thoughts, you or Joanne, on this beautiful on this beautiful Wednesday, dear Meathead Day? 
I'm really puzzled myself. I don't know. I, I really can't make a decision for some reason. About? About the whole day. Oh, um, okay. I really mean that. You mean you don't know what to do with yourself? I, I don't know what to do that is going to be a good thing to do. Well, well, you know, you and I were talking there's, yesterday, and jo- as as did you say, Joanne, or did jo- Joanne say she'll find something for you to do? Yeah. Okay. Now, um, you, yeah, she is my angel. Of course, she really is. Of course, she makes she she makes good choice decisions, and uh, I just follow up. What about now? I was talking with you yesterday. You said sometimes boredom is an issue, um, and and I was like, well. You know, we got to put our heads together and come up with a activity that might interest you. And I remember you were doing stamps and and coins, I think may have been a thing. I haven't done that in years. Does it not interest you anymore or is it? Oh, I don't even know. Oh, okay. All right. So that's that that might be. Um all right. Well, is there anything else that might interest you? Uh, I mean, uh, fall season is here, so you'll be picking leaves up with your hands one at a time. I, I like to work around the yard. That's all about all. All right. Yeah. Well, that's that'll... all I uh, really uh, can offer. Offer. Well, that's it's great exercise. It. That's great exercise. All that bending over. So we'll figure and it like out. Like I, I walk around the whole yard. You know, it's a pretty uh, big yard. Oh yeah, yeah. Just make sure uh, you stay. I... Just make sure you stay on the property. I don't want to see you on Channel 7. <laughs> I actually walk with the stick now, you know that? Uh, I know. Absolutely. Um, okay. But, but, but I can carry myself with one, so without stick. You can carry yourself without stick? Without a stick. Oh, I yeah. got gotcha. you. Yeah, uh, I can walk without a stick. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to review some of the key things that you said here with us today. Uh, you, of course, pointed out that uh, concerning your lovely Joanne, you are adamant about her intelligence. Oh, she's super. Uh, you said if it weren't for Christmas, we'd all be Jewish. <laughs> you, Roses are reddish. You, violets are bluish. Yes, yes. If it wasn't for Christmas... We all be Jewish. I love it. And the Jewish is a wonderful, wonderful thing to have or be. Uh, yes. Okay. Jewish people are great people. Okay. Of course. Everybody's great. You know. Uh, what do you say, Joanne? Jesus was Jewish. Jewish? Jesus was Jewish? Of course. Of course. Uh, you added, speaking of religion, God told Nick Chubb, the football player, to retire. That's right. You pointed out that people who have nine kids are stupid. Uh, They're totally stupid. You said at a job. They're cheating the whole kids. Uh, when it comes to a job interview, number one, look nice. Number two, lie. Yeah, yeah. Hey. A little white lie, and once you get in, then you don't have to lie anymore. Absolutely. Once you get in there, just lie at first. You don't have to lie later. Uh, yeah. We know about uh, you can carry yourself without a stick, and uh, the th- <laughs> the you said the Jewish is a wonderful thing to have. <laughs> yes. As always, Dad, a big hit. Um, Everybody loves you. Oh, and food is food. That's another one. Food is food, right? Okay, Dad. I love you guys, and uh, I love you too, honey. Say hello to your sweetheart. Will do. You. Love you too, Joanne. Thank you. And don't, and don't let the kids push you around. You no, I won't. I'll try not to. But be intelligent. Yes, I will. Intelligence is adamant. Yes. Okay, guys. Thank you. All right. Love you for your time. Love you for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, man. All right. Dear Meathead. So much going on there. The idea uh, the idea that my dad with a puppy. Boy, yeah, he has been, speaking of adamant, so adamant. Not to have a puppy. He has no desire to raise a dog. He loves dogs, but...
but when they visit. But he does need something to do. Let's get him into gaming. That would be fantastic. I should get him some type of uh, system and have him do Can you imagine if he, he'd be like that one guy, Reverend Rowdy Ron here, who games. A fish tank? I don't know. I don't, I wouldn't try. He'd eat the fish. Bring him to the picket line. Oh God. He'd get killed. Um, all right, there you go. Another rip roaring edition of dear meathead. You're not going to believe this. I need to go tinkle. In case you're just wondering, in case you're wondering, I'm having issues. I quit taking the Flow Max. I'm going to pick up another dose of it, another bottle of it today. I'm so sorry, but I'm a little under the weather. My bladder is up to no good. Stand by. Uh, I think it's a UTI. Misdiagnosed from all the new moves and butt stuff. Hurricane Ashley with that one. Um, I don't know. Does it burn when you pee? No. It feels like, it feels like, um, well, either I'm just not able to empty the bladder or it, uh, there's something causing an obstruction in the bladder or something in the bladder. That's the concern. That's where in my brain, I'm like, uh, there's actually only room for a thimble full of urine in the bladder because it's as big as a pomegranate with a um, tumor. That's what the concern is. Which I've heard bladder cancer. That's a, that's a bad deal. Maureen says kidney stones, maybe. I, I don't know. We'll see. I have a one fifteen appointment on Friday. This has been uh, going around for a long time. This has been something that's been building for a long, long time. Ever try a round of antibiotics? Yep. Well, I had... Um, prostatitis for a while. This, this is all I, I believe could be, um, uh, some, some type of, uh, everything connected. Aram said, is there such thing as a bladder stone that could be blocking? Well, maybe I'm just glad that I've had this doctor's appointment for a long time. I'm not Mr. Oh, I'm just going to sit here and complain and not do anything. No, I've been, I can't wait. I'm, I'm reasonably excited about getting a camera stuck up my ding dong. Um, Brandis says my uncle had bladder cancer. He had blood in his urine. I haven't had anything like that. And I, I just had all sorts of blood work done and there was nothing, uh, that indicated anything alarming. Byers is like, yeah, yeah. Just make an appointment at the, uh, at the, uh, fucking, urologist he'll take care of you uh ashley says aren't you glad we are a bunch of doctors well that's the thing it no it doesn't bother me at all it doesn't freak me out more than my own brain can but because i uh, I've, I've talked to buyers about this and i'm scheduled that's it's fine I'm, we can all speculate crimson chin 420 says easy is just excited for anyone to play with his ding dong Always. Prostate, probably the size of a grapefruit, Kyle suggests. Maybe. We shall see. It happens. Again, it sucks getting old. That's what we're dealing with here. Uh, advertise on the Eric Zane Show podcast to find out how. Just send me an email, eric at ericzanshow.com, and I will walk you through it. It's uh, fairly simple. Basically, I talk about you, customers call, you give me money. That's it. Uh, reach out, eric at ericsanshow.com, and I will 
uh, tell you how it works. Uh, like my pal Frank Fuss. Frank is a licensed independent insurance agent slash broker. Year one of the podcast, I had to get insurance through the marketplace, healthcare.gov. I'm still doing that now. There's uh, a lot of, uh, there's a big form, a document online you have to fill out and you have to answer questions and all this shit. And then, uh, well, at the end of that process, it turns out I did it wrong. So the policy that I had purchased um, didn't even have my doctor in the network. Now, normally it tells you that. In fact, it did. It said, Dr. Byers, we love him. It's part of this policy. And then I go there the first time to get like a checkup. And they go, ah, we don't carry this. You, we don't work with this insurance. Well, it said ah, it's wrong. You should have called. Ah, fuck. Ah. So for a year, I had no buyers. I need buyers. That's Dr. Byers, B-Y-E-R-S. Um, so when it came time to getting insurance the next year, I called Frank. He made it so simple. He took care of everything for me. And then I got into a fantastic policy. Um, that's much better than the first policy that I had because he knows what he's doing when it comes to setting this stuff up. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And then it comes time. Um, I'm like, well, how much is it going to cost me for your services? He goes, Oh, nothing. You, you don't pay me. This is a very unique arrangement where all of my customers, there's no cash transaction. I am paid by the insurance companies because I'm putting people into their policies. So you see, all these insurance companies are on healthcare.gov and they work with the government and you get the policies that you choose. And that's how it works. And Frank does all this. So if you want information on how this works, set up a meeting with Frank, you go to one of two places either mypolicyshop.com, fill out the form, make sure you specify that Eric Zane told you about him, or buyinsurancehere.com, B-U-Y, buyinsurancehere.com, both Frank's sites. Uh, I recommend buyinsurancehere.com. It's the easiest, quickest way to get access to him. Uh, it kind of takes one step out of it. Um, go there, fill out the form, have a meeting with Frank, either Zoom, in person, coffee shop, phone, his office, your home, doesn't matter. You specify and get started that way. Frank specializes in a number of things, uh, but today I'm only talking about healthcare.gov. He's also an expert on social security, Medicare, and life insurance. Thank you, Frank. Joe Martinez and his crew at A&E Heating and Cooling, now is the time to schedule your furnace tune-up, 616 616- 516-8579 at 616-516-8579 A and E heating and cooling. If you haven't done this, it's well worth the 79 bucks to uh, uh, have Joe come into your home. Make sure everything is working appropriately. Uh, these are uh, precise pieces of equipment that if they're not uh, looked after and maintained, you're going to suffer a breakdown when it's 21 degrees below zero. Uh, and then your wife hates you. A and E heating and cooling. You see all these jokers on uh, on TV and the radio say, "Oh yeah, the one hundred nine ninety nine uh, uh, tune up. It's bullshit." Seventy nine nine seventy nine ninety nine. Joe Martinez six one six five one six eighty five seventy nine. And then you have a guy. If anything ever happens in the future, scheduled maintenance, preventative maintenance, emergency care. He's there for you. 616-516-8579. Mention EZ as always. One of our local schools, uh, one of our local school districts, Northview Pub Public Schools, have been uh, following um, ever since this started any type of uh, book banning that's in place. And uh, th this is one of the schools this is a new school that is uh, opening up this can of worm about banning some, some books. With nine grams of now, what comes to mind for me, designs. only book that I um, know of was Tyson the book Gender Queer, soft -baked which box. is kind of like a um, uh, animated, illustrated book uh, that's relatable to transgender kids or gay kids. And I mean, 
It definitely is a, um, okay, this is what you may be dealing with as you mature. It's a coming of age book for those type of people, which has some pretty adult material in it. And I'm okay with that. Uh, because let's be honest here. Uh, these kids are, um, they've probably seen it and heard it all to begin with. And for some of these transgender at risk kids, uh, they just want something that they can relate to. So out of the 50,000 books at a library, if there's one talking about vag slime, my opinion is who gives a shit? We treat them like grownups all the fucking time. Kenny says, or uh, Wenji says, is my phone bugging out or is something else playing? Yeah, something else might have been playing there. I've been having that problem from time to time. Very strange. Anyway, uh, this is what's going on with uh, this latest bit of book banning in West Michigan. From the station with the most local news in our West Michigan, Fox 17 News at 10 starts right now. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Josh Berry. And I'm Jamie Sherrod. First tonight, it's a discussion happening across the country. And now, potential book bans are being talked about in another West Michigan district. Fox 17 has learned that Northview Public Schools in Grand Rapids is planning to meet this week to consider pulling eight books from its school shelves. In a letter sent home to families Monday, the district explained they received a request from a concerned citizen to remove the books, which are available to 7th through 12th grade students. The district also explains the books in question are not required, but are part of the student choice reading section. There's a list of the eight books right there on your screen, which will be reviewed by the district. They include Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Mass, Push by Sapphire, Me Earl and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews, and The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. All right, in my brain, my six, uh, sixth grade brain, the bluest eye, I was like, could that be the brownest eye? That's the first thing. Push, push by Sapphire. Yeah, that's that's where my brain goes. How stupid is that? Right. They include Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Mass, Push by Sapphire, Me, Earl, and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews, and The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. Now, some of the books discuss issues like parental sexual abuse, racism, and LGBTQ plus matters. Okay, that doesn't sound so bad, right? What's, what's the big deal there? I mean, unless the book is called Let's Suck Dick. Me, Earl, and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews, and The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. Now, some of the books discuss issues like parental sexual abuse, racism, and LGBTQ plus matters. A committee is set to meet tomorrow to talk about the titles and where things move from here. In a statement, the district says the committee consisting of members of the community, staff members, and two board members will conduct a thorough review of each book and present their recommendation to the interim superintendent. And our dedication to ensuring transparency will keep parents informed throughout the review process. Officials told Fox 17 the review process will take several weeks and that the interim superintendent will make their decision after that. Tomorrow's meeting is not open to the public. How yeah, uh, first of all, that shouldn't take a couple of weeks. Basically, just get a fucking case of beer, thumb through the thing. I try to find, try the, try to find the, uh, the, the parts in question. Crimson Chin says... A uh, kingdom of ash is really kingdom of ass. Uh, meanwhile, the kids are sending each other nudes on Snapchat. Yeah, the kids are so beyond this. They're sending themselves or sending their friends pictures of their own vag slime. The fact that some fucking idiot parent is like, hey, you know, this is the real problem. This is the real problem with the world. That these books are discussing uh, 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 sexual abuse and uh, uh, racism and gay rights. We got to weed this out of our schools. I hate it when parents try to do things that is, uh, that is beyond their pay grade. You know, uh, I grew up in a time 
where I had two sets of parents. My parents and the school. And your parents uh, give the school authority to parent. And you didn't dare fuck around at the school because you knew that you'd be fucked in the ass from the school and then you'd go home and get fucked in the ass more when the note comes home. I sometimes wish we could go back to that. You could you could create a charter school called 70s Kick-Ass School where uh, teachers teach and parents parent and the only overlap is when the parents sign the waiver that says you can kick my kid's ass if he uh, if he gets out of line. Can you imagine creating that charter school and then it takes off and then you've got the they're, they're popping up all over the United States. 70s kick ass school. My god, kids are going to school with their 6 million dollar man lunchbox. Uh, hitting each other with the metal lunchbox. You ever do that one? That was a fucking weapon. Jesus Christ. You got uh, the plastic handle on it, and then inside of it is the big thermos. And then on the other half of it, it's packed with all the food, maybe a big red delicious apple in there. So you're looking at about uh, 40 or 50 pounds. And you swing that goddamn thing and you hit somebody with it. And that's, that's just, oh, whammo right in the head. That's how things got settled on the playground. Kyle says, I think parents need to introduce their kids to the belt when they misbehave or act disrespectful. That does not happen, man. Those days are gone. Mom or dad used to used to pull you by the ear or the hair. Oh God, you think you think your ear was gonna fall off? I see Joe Martinez is here. He's an old fucker like me. You know he got his ass beat when he was growing up. Damn it! Though you see, it's those moments that years later, you know, you're sitting around and uh, you might think it's a therapy session, but it's really just. Everybody's going, oh my God, it was so incredible. He kicked my ass or she beat my ass. Never forget when my mother hit me with a, uh, she was chasing me around the house, swinging wildly with a, uh, a ladle that you use for soup, but it was metal. And the actual ladle portion was steel. So the weight distribution on that was just intense, you know? She swings that at you, and it's it's going high velocity. And finally, she cornered me. And so I'm like, all right, what do I do? Hands go up. And she feigned down low. So um, I put an arm down, and then she came across with that thing, and wham, right in the face. And then that was it. Once she made contact, she was kind of shocked. I was like, oh, oh. And then I'll never forget because I had braces and the inner lip uh, stuck to uh, the braces. It was like on there. Oh my God. I had to pull my lip off of brace and there was actual like lip meat in like the crevices of the braces. Oh my God. Well, anyway. I don't know how I got on that wild tangent about beating your kid's ass. Um, Tongue firmly in cheek, of course. But I think this all gets back to parents uh, trying to uh, push their will. My parents wouldn't even bother with uh, being that involved in school. They just didn't give a shit. The only time they gave a shit is when the teacher would go a little too far and just a little bit too much physical abuse. Then my dad would have to go there, kick some ass. And then that would be the end of it. All right. Big news. Elon Musk is hinting 
that X, if you want to be on Twitter or X, you will have to pay a fee. And look, okay, social media is fun. I love it. Um, I, it's part of what I do. I, I have to be on social media. That's the only way people hear me. I consider Twitch to be social media for God's sake. Um, but I wouldn't pay for Twitter or X. And he says he is going to charge a fee for all users. I don't know, man. That seems to me like everyone would abandon ship. Like he's already made it kind of weird because it's pretty much just a place for fucking uh, trolls and bigots now. It's it's become more like the Wild West again since he took over. But who the fuck is going to pay for that? Uh, Musk said Monday is considering charging all users a monthly fee to use the platform. Musk made comments during a live-streamed event on X with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Oh, yeah. Good thing you talked about the important things. You know, peace in the Middle East and whether whether or not uh, X is going to be free or there's going to be a cost associated with it. He said it was the only thing he can think of to, quote, combat vast armies of bots. This was a response to Netanyahu commenting on keeping bots from promoting hate speech. Uh, I wouldn't, if I'm Musk, I mean, okay, you got bots promoting hate speech, but then you also have, you know, uh, all the right wingers promoting hate speech. Fucking former Zaniacs, Jamingos, Boomer Bobs. We need look no further than them. Musk did not give a timeline for the possible shift or specify what the fee would be beyond saying, quote, a few dollars or something. Uh, Musk has been known to hint at big moves like this and then later reverse course. If I had to pay for Twitter, I just, I, I, I couldn't, I can't do it. You know? Because if I pay for it, my message is going, and everybody else has to pay for it. Whatever message that I'm putting out is going to go out to a to a uh, far less amount of people. I get almost no engagement on Twitter or X to begin with in the first place. It just wouldn't be worth it. No thanks. I think it would be foolish. Um, when G says threads is decent, not sure what blue skies is. I've never, I've never heard of that. Corey says, if he does, I'm going threads and blue sky full time. Kenny says book, how to buy a social media platform and kill it. A book by Elon Musk. Referring to mom ass kickings, wooden spoon for me. My mom broke her arm spanking my little sis. So she got beat with the cast. Wait a minute. Did your mom break her arm while spanking your little sister? Weird. I just stopped using it. Can't charge for something that was free. Yes. That's absolutely true. You always have to have a free option, you know? Like, I can't, if I suddenly said, all right, the only way to ever hear the Eric Zane Show podcast is through Patreon. I'm dead. I'm so dead. I would never dream of that. Now, if I started just on Patreon or did one free show a week, all right, fine. But... Whatever you, you can't unring the bell. Blue sky is created by Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter. I might look into those and just, um, start to utilize it. If this, if this comes, even if it, if it comes to fruition or not, it's not a bad move actually. Uh, all right. 
coming up on Patreon. Danny Masterson update. It's been a rough period of time for this guy. Uh, Here he is arriving to be sentenced with his lovely wife, Bijou Phillips. Put a pin in that one. We'll be back with more on it on the Patreon. What could possibly be worse for Danny Masterson? I love that this guy is in prison, by the way. It took way too long, way too long for that guy to be sentenced. Not to be sentenced, but to finally be uh, brought to justice. Thank you to IMKO. Just subscribed um, on uh, Twitch. I appreciate that. For now, five straight months. And thank you to all of you. You're all subscribers. That's awesome. I see Crimson Chin is not. Kuypers is too cheap. Joe Martinez, well, he's busy. He's working. Kyle Ryan, too cheap. Come on, guys. Link up your Amazon Prime account. Who doesn't have Amazon Prime? Why would you not do that? Okay. Asshole of the day in moments. But first, Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV, 616-532-6600. That's 616-532-6600. You can find them online, ER Vines, ERVines.com, not I R E R. Lady, family, veteran owned. You'd never know they were veteran owned unless if I said something. That's the only way you'll know it. They're not wearing a hat that says, hey, we're veterans. Okay? Let's get that out of the way right now. Uh, early bird drop off, late bird pickup. You can uh, even get a loaner car for free. While your vehicle is being repaired, 616-532-6600 for Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. Um, The King's Room Barbershop, one of my latest sponsors. Three locations, Northland Drive, Caledonia, and they've moved, still in Wyoming. They went from Rogers Plaza, Wyoming, to 821 36th Street, next to the Costume Room, Wyoming. Uh, hours, schedules, uh, costs, all at kingsroom.net. If you've ever gotten your hair cut at Jude's, Lady Jane, Sport Clips, this is the place for you. King's Room Barbershop, gentlemen, that's where you go to get your hair cut. Please mention me when you are with your stylist. Um, Colleen and Andy Skyver are the owners, so it goes straight to the top when they cut your hair. Any one of the amazing other folks who uh, are employees there, please mention it to them and tell them to tell Andy or Colleen, the owners, that Eric Zane sent you. That really helps. They can pay attention to the tracking of how many people are listening to the show and getting their hair cut at King's Room Barbershop. Online at kingsroom.net. All right. The asshole of the day, if you have nominations. Yesterday, it was that hot mom for being the asshole of the day. I can't get over how gross that was. And that kid looks like a twat, too. Yeah, you can't be a normal kid if you've got that hot of a mom. I think uh, Grand has described her as a clout chaser. If you're married to a mom that looks like that, it's just not going to work out. It's not. You know, she needs to be um, minivan. This is attractive to me. Minivan full of kids, coffee in one hand. She's got, you know, a pair of leggings on with a T-shirt, no bra, no makeup, hair all fucked up because she's so busy. Um, You know... Drinks wine at night. Maybe just gets a little tipsy and wants the dick. Uh, yeah, that to me is ideal. That's that's the mom you want. You know, you don't want this this hot ass pristine chick. What the fuck? <laughs> Unrelated. Maureen writes, my cat just puked on my bed. I got to wash the whole fucking thing from comforter down to the mattress pad. I've been there, miss. 
I've been there. That is awful. I'm so sorry you're dealing with that. Uh, the asshole of the day is Tim Ballard. I'm so glad that guy's star is falling. What a piece of shit. Hang on. Sound of freedom, my ass. All right. That's going to do it. The Eric Zane Show podcast is in the books for this Wednesday, September 20. I will join you on the Patreon in moments. Till next time, thank you, folks, and bye-bye.